Yep, I quit my job to sail the world, so now I know how much sailing costs. We are the Dutch sailing family. And in this video we're going to show you exactly how much it costs to, to sail, sail the world. world. We'll reveal all the money we spent in our first month of moving on board on our 2008 Lagoon 420 sailing catamaran. And why do we do this? Isn't it a little bit of a taboo subject? For sure. But we just want to help you figure out how much living on board with your family on a boat really costs. For the longest time I thought you'd either have to be a millionaire or get sponsored or something to be able to sail around the world on your own boat. But now I know that that's not true at all. So let's get going and share with you how much money we spent on our first month of moving on board this boat. So getting right into it, one of the first things we had to be doing is of course move our stuff from the house to the boat. Moving it from Qatar where we used to live onto Cyprus. So moving our stuff itself, the shipment uh, was paid for by the company which was really good. But we still had to pay the import duties and the agent fees and all that. So the agent fees for the side of Qatar were 164 euros and uh, agent fees in Cyprus were 90 euros. Then we had to pay import tax for getting the stuff into the EU, which was a total of 507 euros. And from then, from the airport to the boat, we had to hire a van to get all the boxes transported, which was 150 euros. And we did actually have about 40 boxes to be transported, so it was quite a huge amount. Maybe a little bit too much, but somehow we managed to fit it onto the boat. The month of August was the first month that we lived fully onto the boat, but we actually moved onto it at the end of July. But in August we still had some of the costs to pay for the initial boat purchase. They were 250 euros for the ticket for the previous owner that brought us from Turkey to Cyprus. 250 euros there. We had another 300 euros to pay for the uh, travel lift while the survey was done for the boat. And then the lawyer costs for the purchase of the boat were 500 euros. We also, due to the structure of owning the boat, we had to have a power of attorney arranged. And for that to be validated, you had to have stamps on that. And that cost us 45 euros. Okay, let's move on to the next subject, which is boat gear. Like purchases in terms of the material, stuff that you need on a boat, or upgrades that we wanted to have done. And the first really big one probably was the solar panels. In August we spent 1970 euros for the solar panels themselves, for the solar frame, the charge controllers and the battery monitor. And some of the wiring itself as well. Apart from the solar frames we also have a long list of other costs so let me mention those too. There was 100 euros for a medical kit for the boat. We spent 300 euros to have some cushions added to the front deck of the boat. There was 150 euros spent on a new generator battery. Um, one of the toilets needed its motor replacing, so that was 200 euros. We did want to have some transport for moving on land once we, were, once we would get to some place. So we decided to buy a folding bike and a scooter. The folding bike we managed to buy for 370 euros and the e-scooter that we bought was 730. The curtains that were fitted onto the boat all around the saloon and also in the bedrooms uh, they were of this uh, kind of like creamy color that reminded us a lot of the desert color in Qatar. So we thought maybe it's time for a new chapter and have those changed. So we wanted something gray instead. Luckily we had a friend on Cyprus to help us with that. And we spent uh, 300 euros in total to get those curtains changed. Uh, including a lot of work on our own side as well to get the pleats in. But a huge amount of her from her side to get them sewn and, and done and get the material purchased as well. So that was amazing. Thank you very much Geertje. We did buy a high pressure washer because the boat was extremely dusty from some Sahara storm I guess once we got onto it. So a high pressure washer, 85 euros. In the month of August to get some more work done on the steel frames for the solar panels we bought a grinder for 50 euros. When we were living on the boat we were planning to do our own haircuts. But of course to do that you need a proper shaver. 
Uh, we bought one, dropped it in the water accidentally, so we bought then another one, came to a total of 70 euros. We bought a tube of Sikaflex, 25 euros in that month. We did bring a drill on board, but it was a fixed speed drill and we decided that a variable speed one for drilling through stainless steel would be the only way to go. So 58 euros for a drill, crimping pliers for another 50 euros and then various other smaller items for 48 euros. And then in the transport category, of course, we're still very much tied to land, getting everything ready on the boat and we're not cruising yet. So we spent quite a bit of time traveling around land and you don't have your own car anymore. So the transport category, the first one we had was uh, taxis, was 145 euros for the month of August. Then I had to renew my driving license, so I put it in that category. It cost me 30 euros to get a new license from Holland. We did uh, have a rental car for one day for 28 euros. And we had to return a rental car from the previous month as well. So we had to fill that up with fuel. Total fuel bill was 79 euros for rental car fuel. And we also managed to take the bus quite a few times, which came to 14 euros. And then let's move on to food and drink. We are living on the boat with four people, two adults and two kids of three and nine years old. So we do need a bit of groceries coming in every now and then. Uh, the total bill for groceries in August was 541 euros. Uh, in, partially in Cyprus and the rest of it was all bought in Turkey because we moved from Cyprus to Tur Turkey from the 6th until the 8th of August. And eating out 106 euros. And then for alcohol, I guess we did pretty well. We spent a total of 20 euros in the whole month on alcoholic drinks, whether it was in a cafe or maybe brought from the supermarket and then onto the boat. But we put it in a separate category because, I don't know, I find it kind of meaningful. Then for internet and communications in the month of August, living on our boat, we spent... Uh, 20, what is this? 47. 47 euros on buying data sims for internet or through the mobile phone. And we spent another 10 euros on Skype credit, which is what we normally use to buy regular phones from our mobile phones over an internet connection. For the category of clothing, in the month of August we spent 143 euros, and that's for three pairs of shoes for myself, for Josje, and for Lily. I think we bought those shoes so we were able to climb some mountains here nearby the marina. So that was money well spent, I would say. Then the next one is uh, the toys category. In August we spent 56 euros on toys for the kids. Not sure what it went on exactly, but uh, basically to keep them happy and entertained. 56 euros there. Then we come to fuel and oil related costs. We had a total of nine euros for new oil for the dinghy engine. Uh, we did have to fill up the boat with diesel when we moved from Cyprus to Turkey and that cost us a total of 395 euros to get the diesel tanks full. And then we had another six euros for dinghy engine fuel as well. And the last category I'll come to is the one of uh, marina fees. Uh, speaking for Cyprus, of course, and then Turkey as well. And I think this is a bit of a shocker because before we planned to move onto a boat, we always thought we would never pay more than like 700 euros a month or so to have the boat in a marina. And I had done some research. I had found marinas in Spain and in Greece. 700 euros a month should be doable. Um, but in Cyprus, we actually spent 631 euros for one week to stay after the contract for the boat that was come from the previous owner expired. So that was a lot more than we thought. Then we moved on to Turkey. We researched a lot of different marinas and we chose the Alanya Marina in the end, both for finding other kids for our children to play with and for the best price and then the town around and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for one month, uh, and not 12 months, 
for one month in the Alanya Marina, the cost was 1,683 euros. Um, the only thing, it only evens out to about 700 a month if you stay for a full year. The total bill is of course more, but the monthly average comes down a lot that way. So then yes, it comes to about 700 euros. And I think before I started this adventure, that's something that I didn't really, uh, that I wasn't really aware of. Uh, but anyway, we are now. Maybe it's different in other marinas, I don't know yet. And then coming into Turkey was uh, uh, done with a check-in agent, which I think you had to use. And that was a cost of 200 euros. Checking out of Cyprus, by the way, as far as I remember, didn't cost us anything. Nice and easy. And that concludes our list of costs and expenses for the month of August. Our first full month of living on board our sailing catamaran Roxy. So the grand total of all the costs above comes to 10,655 euros. A bit more than we hoped for, but oh well, no one said it was going to be cheap, right? What do they say again? I think uh, sailing is the most expensive way to travel the world for free. I guess it's probably true. And there you go. This was how much it cost to go sailing the world with our family in the first month. Of course, and hopefully our next month's expenses are going to be a lot lower as this was mostly startup costs. We are going to be sharing more details on the cost of the sailing lifestyle on our Patreon page where you can join for as little as one or two dollars a month or euros, which is about the same as like an ice cream for example. Or if it's not there, shoot us a message and we're very happy to talk about it of course to help you realize the dream. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon in the next Dutch sailing family video. Why not try out this video here for example?